here we are in far north Queensland at the end of the dry season, embarking on a solo expedition into the wild and remote country of Cape York Peninsula. Join us on an adventure to the tip of Australia as we search for wild bush foods, tackle challenging tracks, find remote campsites and try and snag the elusive barramundi. We're starting our adventure just north of Cooktown onto the Starkey Track, also known as the Mount Wewakuka Road. This is a backtrack to Cape Melville and Lakefield National Parks. Conditions are dry, dusty and challenging for the 70 km backtrack, but we're trying to head to Ninian Bay because the locals say the fishing there is good. Our 10 hour off-road journey today was a long one and we are keen to make ourselves at home for our two night stay in paradise at Ninian Bay. Getting ready for another fish? What are we here for? Anything eating besides. <laughs> <laughs> We're here for the skunkies. We spent two unreal nights here and the locals were right, the fishing was awesome, but we didn't snag a barramundi, so we're going to go down the lake field and give it a shot there. There's a bush tucker on the way we want to show you. We're here in a riverbed in the Cape York Peninsula and we've stumbled across some bush passion fruit. The bush passion fruit is a scrambling vine favouring open woodland, tropical woodland and open sunlit tropical forests. Now you can tell it's bush passion fruit because of these little fine hairs covering the green fruits but this isn't what you eat. You get these yellow ones which are ripe. And inside we've got the nice juicy pulp of a passion fruit. Now these aren't native, they were originally from South America, but they taste just like a passion fruit. Um, don't eat the green ones, they are poisonous, but the yellow ones are good to go. We're heading to Lakefield, where we'll be sure to catch a barramundi. In the wet season, the rivers flood the plains, creating one big lake, hence the name Lakefield. But we're here in the dry, and as the rivers have retreated, they've stocked all of the waterways with fresh barramundi and saltwater crocodiles. Whoa! Ooh! What's that? Big black brim. Looks a bit gross though. Ooh. Alright, hold on, he's in there. He's like wrapping himself around that. He's in the snag. Get the shit out of me. We're just talking about crocs. <gasps> Get the hook. Hold on, hold on. Ready? Smile! First barramundi! How many centimetres is he? 72! <laughs> Watch there! <laughs> He's not a good one to eat, so we're going to put him back. That was exhilarating. <laughs> <laughs> With all their lures up in the treetops, it's time for us to leave. Lake feels known for its barra fishing. Without any lures, we're going to keep going. We can always come back. Along the Peninsula Development Road, 
It gets pretty busy with all the trucks and other travellers going up and down from the tip. But if you're up for the challenge and your vehicle's prepared and you are too, you can take the side tracks. And we're going to take the infamous old telegraph track. It's our first time and we're excited to follow the way of the Overland Telegraph Line. This is Palm Creek in October and we're giving this one a complete miss. We're a few kilometres into the uh, old telly track, we're at Palm Creek, so I'm going to head down just a little bit more. What are they on? I'm going to go to 16. Palm Creek is the gatekeeper, where a lot of unprepared people turn around or wait to tag along with a convoy. But not us. We're up for this challenge. Bramwell Station and Palm Creek is the first obstacle. And it's a doozy. Got to here. I mean, you can only really go one way, can't you? It's Palm Creek. How do you feel after that one? Yeah, pretty good. First challenge done. Oh, Palm Creek exit. Big girl ate it up. Is that twin locked? Yeah, yeah, twin locked. 14 and 16 PSI. We've started the old telegraph track quite late in the afternoon. So we've found a place to camp for the night and we've found a bush tucker that only grows up here in Northern Australia. What we have here is the nonna plum. It's found in up here in the Cape York region. We're inland a little bit, and it seems to favour this sort of dry, sandy soil. Now, it's a very important food because it produces so much fruit. See that? Now, the actual fruit that you want to eat is on the ground here. So, you know, there's so many of them. Let's just find one. Look at that. Nice and soft. Like a baked potato, but without the potato taste. If you're on real squishy, it has a little bit of a, a little bit of a sweet taste, but not too bad. There's nothing better than breaking camp with aired down tyres and in low range. There's a side track we want to take to go see the old Del Hunty water gauge station. Not a lot of people have the time to go explore this place, so we're keen to see it. The old Del Hunty River water station. The Del Hunty water gauge station was built in the 1970s and to this day it is still collecting data on this remote river. We pulled up camp surrounded by a beautiful tropical forest with walking stick palms, red beach and all sorts of ferns growing by the river, away from the masses at the main camp. It's definitely the remote feeling we were after. We're about 30 k's in on the old telly track and we're going to give the big girl a bit of a look over because, you know, a she'll be right attitude doesn't prevent any breakages or breakdowns so we're going to show you what we check before we depart camp. So I'm just going to do an under bonnet check first. Essentially just going to look for any wet spots because in these dusty conditions it's really easy to see what's leaking. Check the drive belt, make sure that's all good. Now, if you're not mechanically minded at all, doing a check every day makes you more familiar with your car. So, you know, you might notice something hanging down or flopping around or a new wet patch. So it's just really good to have a check, especially out in these remote parts of the country. I'm gonna check the air filter. It's really dusty out here, but we've made a custom snorkel sock that Jeremy's put on there. Oh, pantyhose. Works a bloody treat. Also want to check everything's nice and secure. 
nothing's rattled loose, so the battery's good, the terminals are good, the fuel filters are good. An important check is to check your fluid levels, so we're going to start with the dipstick of the engine, that's all good. And also check your power steering, your coolant levels and your brake fluid. Now we're just going to have a quick look underneath the car. We're checking for the inside of the tyres as well for any sort of damage. You're checking CV boots if they've been split, suspension leaking, anything like that. Any cracks on the chassis or look at your bull bar mounts too. So one thing to remember when you're checking your tyre pressures in the morning is that your tyres are cold. So the pressure that you set them at now, they will raise a couple of psi throughout the day. So check them in a couple of hours once you've done a bit of driving and then readjust if necessary. See how we go. Let's hit the old Teletrack. With the Hilux checked over and a clean bill of health, we're off to our first water crossing of the track, the Delhunty River. Being this late in the season, all the rivers before Delhunty River were completely dry. There's some pretty big holes in these creeks, some that'll make the car disappear. So it always pays to walk in. And these big holes in the river make it the perfect swimming hole. We're travelling further up the old telly track and we've gone past the Gunshot Bypass on our way to Gunshot Creek. There's a handful of entrances into Gunshot Creek this year and this one looks to be the best, but still pretty sketchy. How I'm going to tackle this entry is I'm going to go in first gear, low range, tyres are let down, and I'm going to go as slow as possible. I don't want any wheel slippage. It's quite astonishing to think that to the west is the corrugated, unsealed Bamaga Road. And here we are, following the old telegraph line, built in the 1880s. It's amazing how pristine these creeks and rivers are up here, even after thousands of vehicles drive through them every year. With the Gunshot Creek challenge out of the way, we've got an obstacle coming up that is a pretty common sight in the bush and on tracks. So we're going to give you a few tips on how right. we drive it. So the problem that you have with wombat holes is these catch out a lot of beginners. It's because they're opposing holes either side. So what happens is most modern four-wheel drives don't really have the flex like the older vehicles. So what happens is they go in the holes, the rear goes in here, the front goes in here, the wheel comes off the ground, then they've got an open diff, no traction and then they stop. And we'll demonstrate that. But there's a few ways you can get around it, especially for beginners, it's really easy. You just, what we call, drive on the high sides. So, low side, low side, the wheels are gonna spin, and no good. So you gotta come along the high side here, and then the wheels are gonna stay on the ground evenly at the same time. So we'll demonstrate both. Further north we travel, the creeks intersect the track, creating a natural barrier for us heading north. We're here at Cockatoo Creek, and we know this one's a notorious one for big potholes and big rocks. So we're going to walk this one and try and navigate our way through. Up here in the tropics, you wouldn't normally walk the rivers and creeks because of saltwater crocodiles. But along here on the old telegraph track, there aren't any saltwater crocodiles. Supposedly. With it being so late in the season, Cockatoo Creek is a breeze to cross. But the exit on the other hand has been chopped up over hundreds of cars driving up it. With the southern section of the track coming to an end, we're quite excited to go swimming in one of Australia's most pristine famous water holes. And you'll soon see why. After a hard, challenging, dusty few days, this place feels like an absolute oasis in the middle of nowhere. It's a welcome sight. We're here at the beautiful Elliot Falls and fortunately a two and a half metre saltwater crocodile was spotted here. I don't know how we got up here. We don't want to be a Crocs lunch, so we're going to go find camp by Freshwater Creek. 
A good place to look for bush tucker is by the creek. So let's go find some. We're along the northern section of the old telegraph track along a beautiful freshwater creek of Canal Creek. And we've stumbled upon native Lasiandra, which is a bush tucker up here in Cape York. Now you can tell it's native Lasiandra by these showy purple flowers and as well as these fruit pods that are starting to form. Now if I can find one that's ripe, the bees love them too and so do the green ants. Oh, this one's kind of open but you've got these fruits here which are encased in this little pod and it's got a black to purple fruit which leaves a stain and dye on you, but they are edible. Mm, that one's sweet. Tastes a little bit like a blackberry. Mm, it's all right, Tucker. I don't know. You can eat it, but it's not high on the high on the Tucker list. <laughs> From now on, the old Teletrack passes through the beautiful Jardine River National Park. We're here at Cannibal Creek, and it seems the further we progress north, the obstacles are increasingly becoming more challenging. But it's not a problem for the big Hilux, because we've built it for tough touring in mind, and it can really handle these difficult tracks. The exit out of Cannibal Creek is going to be a challenging one. So I'm going to flick the front and rear diff locker on and see how I go. With these technical drives, I've got the car in low range and I've selected first gear for this climb, going as slow as possible and as fast as necessary. That's the trick to not break anything. This Cypress Creek Bridge is beyond sketchy, but it's got some raided straps around it, so I reckon we'll be right. Those nerve-wracking creeks really made the right foot shake a bit, but we've made it across. We're here at Logan's Creek, and a convoy of five just went through, so the main crossing's quite boggy. So we're going to take one of these shorter, sharper entrances. Had to do a bit of track build on this one. Not much to winch off either, so uh, see how we go. Logan's Creek has a soft clay base and there's a pretty high risk of getting bogged. Shit. With that crossing done, it means one thing, Nolan's Brooks next. There's many ways to tackle the old telly track. These boys are taking the two wheel option. I bet you a lot of the obstacles are easy on the bikes, but I bet you there's some that are also harder. Just like tackling this bridge at Nolan's Brook. The Nolensbrook Creek Crossing is notorious for getting soft after cars have passed through it. And there have been about three convoys ahead of us that have gone through this creek. So after camping up, we've decided to cross it early in the morning to give ourselves the best chance to not get bogged. We've got the recovery gear ready and the tyres at 8 psi to give ourselves the absolute best chance. This is the last of the crossings on this northern section. Unless you keep going to the very end when you reach the Jardine River. You can't cross it nowadays and I probably wouldn't, there's too many crocodiles. So, joining back onto Bamaga Road and we're going to go over the Jardine Ferry. Which is a natural barrier between the mainland and the tip of Australia. So we're right at the tip of Cape York. It's only a couple of kilometres up here, but we've found a bush tracker. 
we've got ourselves a sandpaper fig. And how we identify it is the, le the leaves are sandpapery, and also with all figs, if you break the leaf off, it's got a milky sap, which is good. So, what you want to eat are the little berries here. You'll probably see them here. Now the green ants absolutely love them, so I'm going to try and find them. They've got to be a black berry. Let me see if I can get some. Over here, here we go. Wow, look at all the green ants. They sting, but they're not too bad. What you do is you want to eat that fruit there. It's very sweet. Mm. We're cruising up to the tip now and our Cape York adventure has truly been an unforgettable one. It's the perfect time of year for us to flick a line in the coral sea and forage for bush tuckers. So I reckon we'll keep exploring until the wet season approaches. Here we are, we finally made it to the tip. And what an adventure it was to get here. We've conquered the telly track. It was our first time. We've had no breakages and it was an epic adventure. Bloody awesome. You should definitely try and get up here. Yeah, and get yourself to the tip. <laughs>